Hello, and welcome to the Big Time Strength Podcast. I'm your host for today, Amanda Berg. I'm so excited for you to hear from my guest today, Coach Kylie Feldman. She is the head strength and conditioning coach at Father Ryan High School in Tennessee. So she's got uh, some great insight. We were just having a conversation before this, and I'm just, I'm so excited for the things that she has to say to us today. So before we start, let's talk a little bit about our sponsors. We got Team Builder. Thank you, Team Builder, for sponsoring today's episode. Team Builder is your leading software for high schools and colleges by providing coaches the ability to write programs online, generate over 13 reports, and even train athletes for remote side income. I know Team Builder is going to be a game changer for us as we move into the education um, season starting up and whether you are in remote learning, whether you are a hybrid or whether you are in person, Team Builder is going to be a way that you can transition seamlessly uh, between the three. So I'm very excited for us to have that and um, you're just going to love it. So go look into it today. Right now, if you sign up with the code BIGTIME, you will receive a free APRE programming template, which works automatically within team, team Builder. No more spreadsheets and workout cards to track training maxes that change day by day. Automate your programming without outsourcing your program with Team Builder. Our second sponsor, PowerLift. PowerLift, leading manufacturer and distributor of heavy duty strength training equipment for collegiate and high school athletic performance centers around the world. PowerLift brings over 20 years of experience to the strength and conditioning world. All products are manufactured in their state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Jefferson, Iowa. PowerLift is proud to support all coaches making the big time where they're at. For more information on PowerLift, make sure to reach out to Mike Richardson at mrichardson at powerlift.com. And our third sponsor, Progressive Speed System from Evan Sport Performance. Are you a strength coach who struggles in the area of speed development? Do you wish you had a system to teach acceleration and multi-directional speed like the system you use in the weight room? Do you know a lot of speed and agility drills, but don't really know where the drills are supposed to, where the drills are that you're supposed to be teaching your athletes? If you would like a system that allows you to plug in your favorite drills in a progressive way to allow you to slowly prepare your athletes to move better on the field or court, head over to evansportsperformance.com. Type in the code BTS50 for $50 off their progressive speed system. We were very lucky to invest in this system at the beginning of our summer program and the results with our athletes within a week and two weeks were dramatic. I could just really tell as far as their running form um, and their speed was significant. So this is a great program. Make sure to check it out. Um, and it's uh, just wonderful stuff. So now let's get to today's show. Here she is. Uh, I'm excited to introduce to you Kylie Feldman. Um, I'm going to introduce talk through her bio here and this is a hall of fame bio <laughs> it is just amazing the the uh, impact she has made so she um, Kylie Feldman has been immersed in strength and conditioning for over 25 years she has extensive knowledge in athletic development within all sports and currently she is the head strength and conditioning coach at father Ryan high school in Nashville Tennessee Listen to this. She worked as an assistant strength coach as a GA at the University of Colorado Boulder, graduate assistant football at Northern Colorado, Air Force Academy, assistant strength coach at Oregon State, University of Washington, and Auburn University. She's been a part of several Pac-10 SEC titles and an NCAA national title in swimming. During her five years at Auburn University, she also served as a strength coach for members of the Caribbean National Track Team. Along with her collegiate experiences, she was also the strength coach for the professional arena football team, the Nashville Cats, Whew. as well as strength coach consultant with the U.S. Army 75th Ranger Regiment, 2nd Battalion. Woohoo! Go Army! Wow. 
Yes. Uh, in the past seven years, Coach Feldman has done strength and conditioning with several Tennessee soccer clubs, both boys and girls, and was part of two national championship teams. She has worked with several high school teams within Williamson County, Tennessee. Kylie has her master's in physical education, coaching, and a bachelor's degree. Kylie, I got to ask you this, AHSS. Arts, humanities, and social sciences. Arts, humanities, I and sure, but I had to switch. Okay. She, she, also, <laughs> she also has a minor in dance, football, and dance. She is currently certified with her CSCS with distinction uh, with the National Strength and Conditioning Association. She's a club level coach, level one at USAW, registered strength and conditioning coach with the NSCA and CPR AED certified. And Carly has also participated with the Colorado State Dance Team for three years. And I think my favorite thing about you, she is from Brooklyn, New York. Woo! Uh, when we get to talk to her. Um, welcome, Kylie. Thank Show you. us that Brooklyn accent. Don't worry about it, huh? Thank you, Coach Burr, for having me. It's very uh, exciting to be here. Yes. I thought, Kylie, before we get started, I think uh, I need to tell our listeners or admit to our listeners a little bit about the last time that I saw you. <laughs> uh, bring it. Bring it. I met Kylie last year uh, at, in Nashville, Tennessee at a national conference and somebody introduced us. And uh, when I saw you right away, I think one of the first things you said to me was, I hope I don't swear too much to you. <laughs> I was like, never too much for me. So uh, I got to see her in the conference. She sat in on our female coaching and um, the female athlete roundtable discussion and just had some amazing input and shared her wisdom with us so I was just like this girl is is awesome I need to get to know her better and at the end of the conference we were in Nashville Tennessee it was kind of the end of the conference we're all around the all out in the parking lot and we're like we better just go downtown right now we're all ready to go we're still in our clothes we're in it was just kind of too late so we I'm like, okay, let's call an Uber. And Kylie's like, oh, shoot, wait, I'm wearing my school polo. And she lives in Nashville. So she's got, she's like, I got to go home and change quick. And I think you even said to me, you'll wait for me, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, of course, I got you. I'll wait for you. I'll hold it up. We'll wait till you get here. And she's like, okay, I'm going to bring my friend. So we're a couple more people join us and we start talking and everyone's all excited to go downtown. They're like, Oh, call the Uber. Uber comes and we all start getting in and we're excited and we go. Oh, and then I get a text. Where are you guys? <laughs> oh my gosh. I left Kylie. I, <laughs> so, I felt so bad. And uh, she forgave me. She's here with me today. And I'm excited to fun. have you. So we've talked a little bit since then, said we're sorry, sorry about it, but I'm excited. So welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, our listeners are in for a treat today. You really uh, just made me sound like the kid that was left from the fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, gosh, I felt so bad. But okay. You trusted. We went out. It was good. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, I think the first thing I just read that amazing bio and just the things I, the stories I think about that could probably happen from all those years. So my question to you coming from someone who I have only been a high school strength coach, I've only been at the same school for the majority of my career. Um, I just wanna hear about the change from moving from college to the high school setting and how it came about. Sure, um, I was, it was 2005, and I had a great run in college, strength and conditioning, and I wanted to be near family, and my family's in the music business, and they lived in Nashville. So everybody's in Nashville's in the music business, right? And so um, I had a couple of colleges 
um, and wound up not getting it, but still wanted to just have a change, wanted to get married, have a family. And I thought my best option was to move to Nashville. And um, I wound up getting a job in the private sector first. And I was with that company for almost 14 years. And I did corporate wellness and I worked with Tennessee Soccer Club and I worked with a bunch of high school strength and conditioning programs, um, lacrosse, soccer, basketball, um, just all these different contingencies because team training is my passion. You know, um, I just, I like big groups. I like big settings. I like the energy and the passion and everybody rowing their boat in the same, you know, direction. And so I just, I had that fire for the longest time and it had been 14 years and I had wanted to get back in college and it didn't work out. Um, and this opportunity came and I had actually left my private horse training company and just figured I'd either branch out on my own or moved to Florida and hang out with my dad because we had since moved him down to Boca because all good New Yorkers moved down to Boca. Um, and then I just had this amazing opportunity and I actually pursued it for about nine weeks before it came to fruition. I actually showed up and cold called them on their doorstep, wow. Father Ryan, and asked if I could just talk to them about training. Did so, they have a position available? Yeah. Yes, so how this position came to be was the Nashville Rhythm is a summer, well, it's a summer league for most college players and pro players that are, uh, don't have a season or a team yet. And it gives them the opportunity to train and play other college you know, athletes around the country. I think there are six to nine teams, if I'm not mistaken. I might be though, don't quote me. Um, and I had coached from the Nashville Rhythm two thirds of their team, probably for, since most of them were 14 and they were 18, 21, 24, 26. So I pretty much coached their, most of their team through the years. And a lot of them did my summer training for college because I have a college group um, that I started probably six years ago. And every Christmas and every summer, we get the band back together and we just go crazy for either the five weeks or the 12 weeks. And I absolutely respect their college strength coaches, but as a college coach, you know, I, I run a very similar program and, and I've had like almost a 98% passing rate when they go back to school. So I'm pretty, pretty proud of that. Um, but the owner of the Nashville Rhythm had asked me, um, if I would like to train their whole team for the summer. And I was like, well, I would love to, but if you're asking me to do it with my private company that I was with, you should know I just quit yesterday. And he was like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, there's, he is the assistant soccer coach at Father Ryan. He's like, I think we have a position coming open. Can you send me your resume? Heck yeah, I will, sure. And it was before spring break of last year. And didn't hear from him for about two or three weeks. So I just pulled up on their doorstep and introduced myself to the AD and said, I would love to make an appointment and just talk to you guys about training. Even if you don't hire me, I would just love the opportunity. Um, a lot of the Father Ryan soccer players were on the TSE teams that I had coached for years. Um, and so they already had an idea of what I was about and my training philosophies and mentality. And then spring break came and went, Easter came and went, and I was down visiting my dad and I get a call from the AD and he was like, are you in town on Monday? And I was like, well, I'm coming back from Florida. And he was like, oh, I was gonna see if you would come in for an interview. I'm like, I land at nine. I can be there by 9.30, not a problem. So I had gotten up at three in the morning and I get to the airport and I get off the plane, throw the work clothes on, get all printed out and, and I show up and, and there was like a two hour meeting. 
Um, and then they, we set up another one and I went again and it was a four hour meeting and then they blessed me with the opportunity and it has been a godsend. It's been absolutely a blessing. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. What a transition. And when I got to meet you, you had, um, hadn't started yet, but you knew that you were moving into this. So yeah. talk to me about Father Ryan High School, where you're at and, you know, a little bit about the program's mission now. I have been around, obviously you read my bio, a lot of programs. Um, I have never been to a school that has been this supportive of administration, of staff, of students, of being appreciated about what I can bring to the program. These kids are amazing. And I know everybody's kids are amazing and I get that. Um, but this mission is about building good humans. And they love the fact that it's not just athletes we're building, we're building our future. We're building good, solid humans. And everything that we learn in the weight room and on the field or court or pool gets you prepared for life. And I love that they valued the, the building of good people and, and good stock. You know, a lot of people are about the wins and the losses, and I get that, right? Because it was at very competitive colleges, and it was about the W's, and, you know, you're on that year-long reevaluating contract where, you know, year to year, you don't know if you're going to have a job or, but the investment in these kids and the investment that they wanted to make in me and that I wanted to make in this school, it, like I said, God's timing is amazing. So I'm very, very blessed that, that, they, that they did that for me. And it's a great school. Come on by and visit if you're in Nashville. <laughs> yes. Wow. So what would you say the culture of the program has been? Has it changed much since you've been there? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So no disrespect to the staffs before us. Okay. I, I want to lay that out right now. Everybody has their own approach. Everybody has strengths and weaknesses to their programs. I know anybody coming in and evaluating what I do could probably say, oh, I wouldn't do that. Why are you doing this? You know, and you got to be able to defend your program in science. Um, but there were about 50 back injuries in three years there. And um, that to me was startling. Um, I have a very physiological and biomechanical approach. Um, and a very simple approach. You've got to be mobile, you've got to be flexible, you got to have a good foundation. You can't build a foundation on a house of quicksand. Um, they had a program where I believe they were maxing every two to three weeks all year long. And again, no disrespect, it, it's just, it, it's what it was for them. And my assistant and I came in and for the first 10 to 12 weeks, we took all the bars away. They really? did not have a bar on their back or their chest at all for almost two months. We went back to basics. We went back to technique, form, everything, sticks, dumbbells, kettlebells, plates, before we put their bar on, body weight. And, and it, was a, it was body weight and then you build up. And we worked on everything. So by the time we put the bars on their backs. Um, one of my kids who had a back injury, who was a senior, um, ended up squatting 225 for reps at the end of the year. But it took us about six, seven months before, you know, we got shut down at, at, at month eight. Yeah. So it took us eight months to really rebuild and, and kind of start a new attitude and idea that we've got to do it from the ground up. How was the coaching staff with that? Was it with the sport coaches? Was it something they had not seen before? And I mean, I'm thinking just kind of going right into that football season, that could right. be a big change fast. Right. So to be fair, football did their own programming until January. Um, Coach Sharp, Duan Sharp and I, um, we met our first day of, of orientation. So. <laughs> He is an assistant football coach and an assistant strength coach. And, you know, 
you always talk about wanting to be able to be in the interview process and, you know, know somebody that, you know, you're going to be on staff with. Again, I have to say that is divine intervention because Duan is absolutely amazing. His resume is amazing. Attitude is amazing. Um, he's young in our profession, but he's in his 30s. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a lot more experience with, you know, football and um, he's had his own private training company and has worked with professional athletes, college athletes, high school athletes. He trains his own sons, um, but his temperament and we just complement each other. Like I can't even believe how symbiotic we are. And it's, it's not by committee that we make our programs, but I value what he says. And if he wants to try something and it makes sense, I'm all in. And I make suggestions to him and he's all in. Sometimes it, full, it fails miserably and sometimes it's just like amazing. Um, so football did their own programming through just November. And then they handed the reins over to us um, and we won over their confidence. And I had already been doing, we have 29 sports, 30 sports actually, 29. And I assist with football. Okay. So Dewan is the actual head strength coach of football. And then I got the other 29. But Dewan helps, Coach Sharp helps me when he can, um, because it's really important that, you know, a male coach works with female and male and a female coach works with male and female. And so it just becomes about being athletes and coaches. But the fact that we were on the same page and our sport coaches, because of the injury rates that they had, were willing to do and defer to our plan and our expect expertise um, to try a different approach. So they were all about it. Actually, wow. almost every coach was hands off. Amazing. I think that uh, just shows the impact you can make, you know, so quickly. Uh, one year in, what would you say? And I think we, you had talked, you're about a week in as far as athletics right now. Yeah, we are actually four days in to the school. We are, well, actually it's Wednesday, right? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> March 10th. Um, we have been in service last week. We have been in school since Monday. Um, but our fall teams have been in practice since June 15th. Minus the dead period, just so everybody's clear. We didn't practice for two weeks <laughs> and then came back July 5th. Got to be PC on this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so what's and, different this year? What's different this year now that started taking those steps last year? We're in year two and now the fun starts. Mm -hmm. Now we get to work on pulls from the floor and high pulls in the second installation into hang cleans. Like... The one thing that I learned in college is for us and all the programs I was at, it was almost two to three months working on your jump shrugs and your clean pulls before you even attempted a high pull or, a, or a, um, an actual hang clean or a power clean. We worked on all that foundation for a long time. And our freshmen, when they got to college, we spent three to four months just working on the triple extension and the pulls. So we've done that now. We've got a really good foundation. And I was talking to the kids today about that. And I was like, look, we're going to review this week. We're going to review next week. Because some of you have not touched a weight since March 10th or March 13th when we shut down. And some of you, you know, they, some of them had been training. Um, some of them built their own gyms. I mean, everybody had the quarantine gym in their apartment or the garage mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, if I had a dime for every push-up that was done since March, we'd be on an island somewhere, somewhere. Oh, really nice. oh my gosh. The body weight workouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's been, we are going to get into our lifts. We're going to do a lot in unilateral movement this year. Um, we did a lot of body weight unilateral movement last year. Now we're going to throw the weights on. Okay. With Respecting the mobility still and the flexibility. Yeah, and they're ready for it. Oh, I love it. So you work with 29 teams. <laughs> and what are, you, what are some of the things you're doing in the bait room, weight room to build that camaraderie and develop leadership in your athletes? So 
we are about when I got there, they had asked me because they had, you know, girls teams and guys teams separate and classes separate girls and, and Father Ryan is super fortunate that we do weight training for athletes. So we train our athletes during the day in class. That's their PE. They can take a regular PE class or if they're an athlete, they take either Coach Sharp's or my class. Coach Sharp has four classes. I have two um, because I go into the evenings and he's with football. So, you know, we get divvied up that way and we have slightly staggered schedules. So I come in like mid morning and then stay late and he's morning and gets to, you know, tap a little early. Um, but we, uh, I apologize. I just went down. That's okay. Camaraderie, Look, camaraderie and leadership. No worries. See, that's the thing. When straight coach starts to talk, it just kind of goes off the reservation so many different times. Oh yeah. Um, so they asked me, what would you do differently for these classes? And I said, you got to integrate them. And we talked about that at the conference last we did. year. That was my first, first thing was I want these kids co-ed. For me, the guys need to see that the girls can be beasts in the weight room and they can be athletic and they're not just targets, you know, some, you know, something to, to socialize with, you know, that, that they can be equal and, and just be responsible respected as athletes and you know a lot of the girls need to learn how to be competitive and to lift and that it's okay to be strong it's okay to be a powerful strong woman even if you're lifting five pounds even if those tens feel like 50s to own your strength level and own where you are at you know and I got a lot of questions well is there going to be a lot of distractions and is there going to be we're on a timer and everybody is literally, we go by height and strength levels, you know, so there's not a lot of uh, changing out when we were allowed to touch things together, yes. <laughs> like partner up and, and spot and everything. Um, but everybody's on a cadence, everybody's on their lifts, and we have very little of that kind of distraction. And we also set that from the get-go. We had a syllabus, we had our rules and regulations, our non-negotiables, and right outside our weight room, there's a cute little hill that we do backward bear crawls for performance enhancement when we need a little reminder about <laughs> and refocus on where we're at. And so I'm pretty sure every team in every class down the hill at one point or another. That's that army training coming in, huh? From those days. <laughs> it's mentality. It's you train the mind and the body's going to follow. And when mm -hmm. you treat every class like a team and a family, you got to take care of your family. Everything else rolls downhill easily. Wow, I love that. That's a, what a big impact to make so quickly. You know, just this is what we're doing. We're separating them. I love it. So you mentioned the assistant coach. What's his name again that you work with? Dewan Sharp. Okay, Dewan Sharp. Uh, what are some ways that you manage, develop, and evaluate the staff that you work with? So... The other thing that I thought was really important was getting interns, right? 29 sports doesn't happen today because of, you know, our protocols, but we did have 79 to 85 athletes at one time, you know, so the more eyes, the merrier. So I went to the local colleges and um, I had a really good relationship with MTSU and um, had gotten some interns at the private training company that I worked for and just kind of switch that over to high school strength and conditioning. And, and so every semester we've got a talented pool from MTSU or Vandy or Belmont or um, Western Kentucky or Tennessee State. You know, we have all these really amazing resources, Trevecca, Lipscomb. I mean, we have a bevy of wonderful, you know, opportunities here. And so, um, Duwan and I um, had gone out on many a luncheon and kind of taught philosophy and taught training and um, we, we would have staff meetings weekly and when our interns got there we had um, internship meetings every week, intern education, they had projects they had to do. Um, at the end of the semester they had to pick a team that they weren't familiar with, research it, do a needs analysis on it, 
and program for it and then present it to us and defend it. This way, when they graduated, they were interested in working with teams, they had something that they could go and say, I've already done this, look what I can do for you. Wow. Yeah, so we have those evaluations, we have midterm evaluations, we have uh, continuing education, we have staff retreats, and it's usually me and whatever I picked up at Kroger or Publix or go to a park or something or <laughs> go into the office and lock the doors. Um, but it, there's a lot of talking and a lot of educating and I love learning from the interns. And I think if my experience has taught me anything, it's everything's got, everyone's got something to, you know, contribute, you know, and as long as I have my, my foundation and my philosophy, I love hearing the wise of other people. And if it makes sense, I want to try it. And you got to be able to program in pencil, you know, yes. <laughs> Or erasable whiteboard. I yeah. like it. I think I see a future presentation on your hands there. I'd like to hear yep. a little bit. I, oh my gosh, that'd be great. All the colleges you have access to, that's, that's amazing. I think on my end, our nearest college is 50 miles away. So it's really a lot to, you, you know, reach out. Too? What? You and your colleges as well? In Community colleges, college? yeah. Yeah, they're about 50 miles away, so... It's, uh, it's hard to get interns out to come this way unless they're from around the area. But yes, I think I... <laughs> All right. You talked a little bit about your training philosophy and that, you know, if you have your training philosophy, you're willing to hear from others. Um, yeah. What is unique about yours and what are some things that you are going to make sure that you stick with, you know, even after hearing stuff from other people? Yeah. Um, foundation is key. Uh, we are working on athleticism. There's no such thing as sports specific training. There might be sports similar, but the only kind of sports specific training you're really going to get is on the field with their sport coaches. We are here to develop athleticism. Every team jumps, every team presses, pushes. And I don't know if it's unique. It's simple. We mm -hmm. build from the ground up. And doesn't have to be complicated. Doesn't have to be all the bells and the whistles and the, the everything, you know, everything is shiny. You get, get back to the basics. Squat, deadlift, unilateral work, flexibility, mobility, good rotational core, anti-rotational core work. And you just gotta keep it so simple. And let's be realistic, between ninth and 12th grade, they are giraffes. They are baby giraffes, yes. right? On stilts. And not only day old giraffes, the ones that just come out fall in <laughs> just like splat. And those freshmen and sophomores are tripping up the stairs and they have size 14 shoes and legs this big and they're wonderful and clumsy and they don't know how to squat and they don't know how to move and they don't know how to bend. <laughs> so, I mean, most of your time is teaching them how to tie their shoe and not fall over. Yes. I can't think that that's unique to, to our school. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm really impressed because, if, if, especially coming from college, where you have, you know, athletes that have a little bit higher training level and being able to realize that so soon. Yeah. It seems like a lot of times when, coaches come down from college, they just want to do so much that is so similar to the college athletes. So yeah. great that you are able to have that philosophy. Didn't, uh, come, didn't come quickly. It didn't. I had to really go back to the long, the LTAD, long-term athletic development model, mm -hmm. and really invest in the education of puberty and changing levers and where the growth spurs come from and how to how to physiologically and psychologically deal with that. That took about two years to okay. really get a handle on that. Okay. So talking about learning and adapting, what are you excited about learning and improving as you move forward as a coach? Um, I, love, I love learning what my athletes can do. I love 
seeing something spark in them that they hadn't. I love learning a little bit more about triphasic training. Um, okay. You know, I, we do a lot of isometrics anyway. We do a lot of, you know, half of them can't do pull-ups. Well, two thirds of them can't do pull-ups. So we do a lot of eccentric work, you know? And so um, I believe that's Cal Dietz and I- Yes, from Minnesota. <laughs> Woo! Um, I really want to invest a little bit more on seeing what that can do for our programming. And like I said, I mean, you said, I mean, I'm a dinosaur. I mean, yeah, I've got a lot of experience, but I'm also a linear periodization model type gal. And, you know, I, I think that there's so many things that go into training this age that all of that is, is just that, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to learn about that stuff when they get to college. So I'm excited about that. That means you'll have to come out to Minnesota next year because it's a, uh, for our national conference and it's a hub of talking about triphasic and a lot of coaches, um, you Absolutely. know, we get to hear Cal Deet speak often. And so a lot of coaches try it, try it out, but I know it's been a game changer in our program. I love using it for preseason work. So I'm excited. I'm going to pick you. your brain about that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely going to pick your brain about that. Yes. Well, uh, Moving on, I love, you know, one of the big things that stuck out to me that I knew I wanted you on was just a, your college experience and the difference with the high school experiences and the Big Time Strength podcast has both of those. What are some differences that have surprised you between the two? Hmm. High school is getting to where college is. A lot of older strength coaches are exploring getting out of the unknowns of college and they want to be with their families more and they want more time and more balance and high school strength coaching has absolutely exploded it has been a necessary um, transition that's needed to happen um, all of us realize through the years that when the freshmen come in we spend half the year untraining them or detraining them and retraining them. Yeah. So uh, to, to have that blessing of going to, I don't want to say where it begins because now middle school is going to this direction also, but to, to be able to, if you're looking at a tree to go lower underneath the soil to some of the roots, and help cultivate the roots, that's huge. Yes. And that's which it gets me out of bed to go in the morning. So <laughs> well, I'm like excited. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the sorry. The 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 politics of college got really bad my last few years. Um the you know, I am not going to pretend that my professional career has been roses. It has been an uphill battle for many years. It has been the good, the bad, the ugly. But every situation has made me grow, has made me a better coach, a stronger mentally and physically, um, being able to handle that. And I wouldn't trade any of the experiences that I've had, but it was a rocky road. Mm -hmm. I mean, 1992, there weren't very many of us. Yes. Do you think so, that your experiences that you had, do you think that they are helping pave the way for others that they may not have to go through that? You know, in the strength coaching world, in the collegiate world, I'm not very well known. And in certain circles, you're going to have a great uh, feedback about me and and in some circles you're gonna you know you're gonna hear why is she, how is she even still in this profession <laughs> um coach huddy uh rachel ellsworth um stacy uh excuse me, stephanie out of kentucky there are myriads of females that are very mm -hmm. well known very highly publicized and i think they've done you know a lot for our profession um, it, it's been amazing what they, you know, what we've all done. 
there are several of us that don't have that high profile that have been just chucking away and knocking at the doors. And, and I think that for me and the people that I've come in contact with, I've heard more of, wow, I totally forgot you were a female as soon as you opened your mouth and we started working together. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. But I know yeah. that a lot of the athletes, both male and female that I've had since 1992, um, have thought about strength and conditioning as an option where they hadn't before, you know, maybe I could do that. You know, um, how do I even, you know, I love lifting. How do I make that a passion? How do I turn this into a profession? Maybe not in college or high school strength and conditioning, but private sector and how to open my own gym and how to be healthy after I'm done competing. Cause, and I'm sure coach Berg, you understand a lot of these athletes when they're done still eat, like they're still in college. Yes. And they stop training and what happens? Yep. I, yep. <laughs> yes, I can see that. I bet you've made, yeah, an impact on so many. Um, you know, speaking, you talking about working with other coaches, one thing that st stuck out to me when I met you and a few interactions I've seen with it is your name. And if <laughs> people will... If people look in the show notes, you'll see Kylie's name and it's spelled K-Y-L-E. And I've been to two conferences where you were involved and it drove me crazy when they did Kyle Feldman, Kyle Feldman, and they keep asking. So I kind of, I asked you, I said, can I ask you about your name? Because I can see maybe on a resume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has it been an advantage, disadvantage? And how many times have you had to say that in you know, I say it every time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, even calling like an electric company, I'm like, is Kylie pronounced Kyle? Like, that's almost my name now. Like, yeah. that's almost yeah. how we go. Um, I got a lot of interviews that I shouldn't have gotten because when they interview me and I show up on campus, they're like, where's Kyle? And I'm like, well, it's Kylie and I'm right here. And they're like, Oh, sorry. Right. Or, um, I didn't get, um, I was blessed with opportunities that at the time, not a lot of females were getting. I am an alpha female. I'm from New York. I got a, a really thick accent. I've got a deep voice. I got a guy's name <laughs> and a predominantly male profession. So, um, it's, it's, you know, you gotta have some tough skin and, and, if you get in the door because they think you're a guy and then you let yourself win them over, that's great. But I, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've been across from coaches that said I would never hire a female, you know, wow, to work with my guys. And I'm like, I don't think you can say that. And, and he's like, darling, I can say anything I want. And I'm like, okay, sir, you got it. I appreciate the time and I will never be rude or disrespectful, but, um, I've, it, it's been a lot of surprises and it's amazing how many interview responses I've gotten where it's like, you're not what I thought you would be. <laughs> I'm not exactly answer? sure what that means, but I. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What a unique perspective in this field that you have gotten to have because of your name. So I appreciate yeah. you sharing that. Uh, well, one of the big things we talk about the Big Time Strength Podcast, and I already see you doing it, but just your perspective on how are you making it the big time where you're at at Father Ryan? Yeah, so um, we're really big on including our alumni. We are, um, I just sent off a bunch of seniors to college, you know, to freshmen in college, and um, we have an Instagram page, and, you know, you got to keep tabs on them and just say, hey, you know, to all of you that are moving on, good luck, we support you, we are here. Um, just the interaction and, and we all know for strength coaches, it's about relationships. And it's my biggest blessing is that there are athletes since my GA time at Colorado that I'm still in contact with and they're 48 years old with families. Um, or 46 with families. Um, 
the big time is knowing that they, you care about the kids, them knowing that you care about them. This, I'm working on the, the work-life balance because, you know, not being married and not having kids, it makes me a little different than a lot of, you know, people in our profession who have families and kids and want to spend time. Um, I go to almost all their uh, games and stuff on every team. I go to cheer competitions. You got, if you ask them to invest in you, you've got to invest in them. You got to show up. You know, that's how we're making that big time is that they know we care, we're gonna ride them. As, as, as hard as I get on them for, for going off the exit on highway that we're on, I get just as jacked up about when they do something right on the highway that we're on. And you've gotta be equally as excited because there's nothing worse than coming down on a kid and telling them what they need to improve on. And then when they get it, just go, good job. Yes. Okay, thanks. It's very anticlimactic, mm -hmm. you know, and, and kids are at their core. Now, we can all know that during that teen time, we can be, we were all teenagers. We all know we're going through, our hormones are crazy, our, our, our minds are crazy. <laughs> like, we are just not making sense. They're drama queens. You get more than two kids in a room and it's ugly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just... But it's how to calm all that down and focus that and make them realize that that can be a great strength and, and get their, just get their evil forces for good <laughs> and channel it the right way. Wow. So that's can, how we make it. I can tell you're making just such a difference in so many lives. And I'm just, I'm excited to hear about the future of Father Ryan after a few years with you being there. I know it'll be so impact, impactful. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, sure. Fast five here and uh, just getting a little bit about you and talking some things that you're, that you're at. Favorite book? Ooh. I have authors that I follow, but uh, Mark Greenery. Greeny, excuse me, Mark Greeny right now is the Gray Man series. And he's an assassin that has a conscience, a lot like Dexter. It's a great series. Oh, fun. It, it's my guilty pleasure. I read a book every three days. <laughs> Fiction, mostly? Oh, yeah. Murder oh. mystery. Awesome. Sometimes I think you can learn more from fiction than you do from nonfiction, just the values of it. We're living so. in nonfiction right now, and it's <laughs> pretty is... scary. I like to go away. This is true. This is true. Uh, person that's influenced you the most in your career or your life? Professionally, it's my mentor. I've got three. Um, a giant in the field. Um, he is a second father to me. He threw me out of the weight room the first six days that I walked in. And on the seventh day, I found something I could do that would entice him to let me stay. And um, so he is the one who, who molded me and yelled at me and cursed me out and made me paint bumper plates and make protein drinks from in two ounce Dixie cups for eight and a half hours a day, five days a week, and just put me through the ringer. And I love that man more today than I had any other day. Every other day it gets bigger. And then personally, it's my mom. She passed away when I was 21, but both okay. my parents okay. are, are who I am. Okay, can you say your um, coach's name again? It might've cut out. I want everyone to make sure that we hear his name. The Coach you worked uh, on? Doc Creek. Doc, EJ it. Doc Creek. Doc Rick Hughley, Alan Hedrick. Three mentors. If you ever get the chance, Rick is, is in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Coach Alan Hedrick is just retired from CSU Pueblo, and he was at the Air Force Academy. Um, and Doc Creek, who is no longer in the profession, but Giants. Awesome. I was able to meet Rick Hughley last year and I could just tell, yeah, what a quiet, wonderful leadership that he, I can tell he has to so many. So uh, oh, good. 
so good. I had my biggest three years of growth as a coach in the big time under him. Okay. That's amazing. amazing. Anxious to uh, pick into him a little bit more too. So how about favorite quote? Do you got one? Um, ooh, finish stronger than you started. Oh, I love it. Yes. I always promise I won't write stuff down, but I gotta, I gotta write it down. <laughs> we end that every day, every day after our workout. I say, when we were on our last set, I say last set, they yell back best set. You go two or three times, get everybody hyped, throw the music on and go to it. Go to it. Love it. Wow. Uh, okay. You talked about work-life balance and you're trying to, trying to get there. What about favorite hobby outside of that weight room? Reading. I'm, I'm a bookworm. You know, there are so many of us that, that are, for our jobs, we're such extroverts. And then personally, we're kind of introverts. Mm -hmm. I can be socially awkward with the best of them outside of talking about what I love. So um, hanging out, like just, I'd like to, to work a little bit more on being around friends more and, and growing relationships with like regular people. <laughs> but my job keeps me, so that would be great. Okay, so building some more relationships. Love it. Uh, how about another high school, small school, either college that's just killing it, either f female or male? Sarah Lynn Strength, I am glued to their IG page. It's ridiculous. I watch them. I, I love what they do. Um, it's Sarah Land Strength on Instagram. Okay. They're doing some wicked stuff. I just love watching them. I try not to get near the phone when I'm not at work, but I just look at everything he does. It's so cool. Okay. They I really got big training down pat. I got to check that out. And that they can film so much of it. That's what, something I have a hard time with. So, Do you? Well, why? With filming, just because I'm coaching so much coaching. yeah and I'm always like I gotta I should have got that and then the day goes by and I haven't done it haven't got any footage yet so that's actually something I'm working on as well but awesome we'll have to check them Use out your sport coaches. that's true you got to do that got to do that well um, I this was wonderful everything I expected it to be you just have so much insight um, in this industry and I know that there's just so much more to come with Father Ryan, and I'm excited to hear how they are. So I can't thank you enough for joining me today. Um, you're killing it. <laughs> if I may take a moment and thank you, I would like to thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Um, I'm gonna be so jacked up for the rest of the night. I'm gonna start thinking about things I wanna do tomorrow. <laughs> but um, I admire you a lot. I admire what you're doing. And for everybody who watches these, this coach right here is our future, and it's exciting to see the path that she's creating. You're Thank amazing. You. Thank you very much. So I definitely love this industry. So excellent. Well, and one thing we should note, we made it through without swearing, didn't we? <laughs> My parents would be so proud. So yes. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Big uh, Time Strength Podcast. I'm excited to continue to bring you great female coaches in the industry and uh, put them in front of you. So uh, have a great week and thank you very much. Thank you.